In today's episode, we're going to test the PTO horsepower of the BX2680 and the 1025R just to see how they compare. We saw this old dynamometer at the Boone County Fair, and we thought it would be perfect for our comparisons. The Boone County Antique Tractor Club was kind enough to bring it out and let us give it a shot. We decided it would be good to start with the larger tractors. This will help us get the oil hot in the dyno, and it will give us some time to understand how this thing works. Is that my 40? What do, you, what do you have, about 550? Yeah, It's in the full reading state now. First we have to have this, he pulls it down to where this is right on 540. Looks like it might be a little bit high right now. Right now this tractor is reading about 61 PTO horsepower. The oil is not very hot in here yet. So we're thinking it may change if we let it run for just a little while. So is that regular hydraulic fluid? Yep. Yep. Like a high trans fluid or a high guard? That's actually exactly what it is. And those copper coils, they go all the way down to the top and bottom, so there's quite a bit of copper in there. Yeah. Plus whatever uh, rubber we've added. Now that the oil's hot, it's reading 64 PTO horsepower. Now I'll ask the guys in a minute about the accuracy of this unit. We'll have some discussion about how it works. But we're just kind of getting it warmed up now. It's reading 64 PTO horsepower. The temperature is in the green range between 140 and 180 Fahrenheit. And this is running just above 540. As it gets a little bit hotter, it doesn't pull quite as hard. It makes it read a little bit higher horsepower. So oil being hotter makes it flow more freely. So that tractor read about 64 PTO horsepower. Do you think this thing is accurate? I think it's pretty close. It's pretty close. It's within five horsepower, I'd say. Okay. Because that tractor's rated, it's a little hard to say, rated somewhere around 59, 57 and a half. There's two or three different specs on it. I'm not sure what to, what to take. How does this thing actually work? It's basically just an oil pump. So you've got a tank full of oil. The tractor runs the pump. You've got an RPM gauge and basically a gauge that has pressure converted into horsepower. Okay. So you're just creating a restriction and reading the pressure and seeing what RPM it pulls it down to. Okay, so it's really kind of a, I don't know, I guess from a physics standpoint, it's like fluid dynamics. I mean, it, it yeah. takes a certain amount certain of power amount. Yeah, to generate to a, a certain amount of pressure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's calibrated so that it's going to take a certain amount of power to turn the pump to get a certain okay. pressure. And we could probably do all that with math, but this has done it for us. That way we yes. don't have to be so bright, right? <laughs> yeah. Now, how old is this thing? Late 60s, Late early 70s, 70s I'd say. 70s. Just a guess, I do not know. Now, the biggest quiz of the day is how to say the word of what it is. And you can't cheat. Dynamometer. Dynamometer. <laughs> uh, everybody just says dyno, because it's a little hard to say. Mm -hmm. It's a little easier. <laughs> So guys, this tractor's rated at 30.4 PTO horsepower. I don't see any .4s on that gauge. No, no, we'll get you pretty close. Now, be kind. You told me you could kill this tractor. Be kind. I can stop it. Uh-oh. <laughs> might set your parking brake. <laughs> it might set my parking brake. If you get it up above 60 horsepower or so, just that's probably about all you back better do. Off. You know, I don't want to twist your shaft or anything. We'll back it off a little bit. Okay. Seventy-five, seventy-eight, eighty-two. Hey, that's over the limit. Thirty point four. We're a long way from there. We are a long way from there, and you're already up to ten. Yeah, yeah. With this tractor, we're seeing about twenty-eight PTO horsepower. Now, I understand this thing was made nineteen seventy at the latest. We have really no idea of the accuracy. Just kind of curiosity. It reads 28 PTO horsepower. It's rated at 30.4 PTO horsepower. So we put the tractor to full throttle, and that turns out to be about 560 RPMs on the PTO. They use that yellow handle there and restrict the oil pressure and pull the engine down such that it reads 540 RPMs on the PTO. 
and that's when they can say that the horsepower gauge is accurate. So it pulls the engine down just a little bit. It's really not the maximum horsepower of the tractor. The maximum horsepower will be a little bit less RPMs, but I think this is the only way this one reads. Are you saying that if, if we pulled it down to 500 RPMs that the gauge is no longer accurate? Is that what I'm understanding? Because I think it would Uh, this one reading the, the PTO RPM on the tractor does match the gauge, our RPM gauge exactly. Because the spec they actually talk about at different RPMs than 540 RPMs, and so that may be part of the difference. In fact, I think they talk at 2100 on this tractor. Yeah, and I don't know if it, if it loses accuracy because it loses that speed or not. So what we came up with on this one was about 27 PTO horsepower, which is less than the spec. And we tried to pull it down a little bit further. We've got a chart here. It was kind of interesting to see that the horsepower rating on this gauge is only accurate at 540 RPM. But there's a chart if you want to pull it down further that you can say at a given pressure, at a given RPM, what is the horsepower. The thing was, it was about 27 at all ranges we tried. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, we don't know for sure the accuracy of, of this device, but hey, it's a lot of fun. You wanna try another tractor, guys? Yeah. Yep. And it's not yeah, I don't think that PTO is gonna latch on. This tractor is rated at 19.5 PTO horsepower, 25.5 engine horsepower. What did we find on this one, guys? Uh, about 24, 20, 23 and a half, 24 horsepower. Wow, that's a good bit higher than the rated. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got one more tractor, Deer 1025R. Although I am interested to see how you can turn it by hand. Well, it involves a very special crank. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this one's got a full size shaft. So this one was about 24, and it seemed like the longer we left it on, it was a little higher. I don't know if the, the oil was probably getting hotter, but 24, 24 and a half, almost up to 25. I find this unique. Either the machine is not calibrated appropriately, or both these machines, the BX and the 1025R, are significantly over their rated PTO horsepower. I could actually envision the latter being true because of the EPA regulations with the tier four and everything of them trying to push these engines just as far as they can uh, to stay under the, the regulations. What do you guys think? You think we're pretty accurate? I think we're pretty dang close. If anything, it's a good comparison between the deer and the Kubota. Yeah, yeah, it really is, and, and surprisingly close. Yeah. I don't think you could tell the difference if you were in the field. Not with two horsepower, probably not. It wasn't even that much, right? It's kind of 23 and a half, yeah, four. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're really talking one horsepower, there's just no way. Now I wish we had the BX1880 Kubota, it's 18 horsepower, and the 1023 John Deere, just to kind of see how they compare to each other, you know, within the product line, but, because uh, a lot of people are saying that the smaller models seem to pull about as much as the bigger models, so. So, so guys, you were under there with the PTO shaft. The Kubota has a, a stubby PTO shaft. It was did, a little short. Did you find it difficult to attach? Yes. Yeah, a little bit. It wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it, I would think they should have something that's the same as everybody else, just yeah. to make sure. Yeah, the PTO shaft is kind of stubby on it. The Deer has a just a regular size 540 PTO shaft. Now we're trying the EPTO setting. This is the economy mode where the PTO runs faster. We're gonna run at 540 RPMs, but the engine speed will be lower. But it allows you to use less fuel if you have a lightweight option, say a small rotary cutter. We're actually seeing a higher horsepower at the EPTO speed. It looks like 65 horsepower in EPTO mode. So actually a little more horsepower in the economy mode. I find that strange, but it's interesting information. Now I know I should run an EPTO when we're mowing.
Hey, I really appreciate you guys joining us today. This was... Oh, we had a good No time. problem, it was fun. This is something that very few people get a chance to experiment with on these subcompact tractors. Yeah, I don't think I've ever really seen anybody try to try to do this type of comparison with them before. It's something quite a bit different, I mean, you know, for us to do. We're used to everything old and obsolete, but uh, to compare something that's, that's current, uh, it was different, it was neat, we had a good time. Yeah, now this came from M&W Gear. Now they were located in Gibson City, Illinois, back in the day. Yeah. This one doesn't say Gibson City, it says Anchor. Anchor Illinois. Illinois. M and W was located in Gibson City, and it now is the the same building that Rhino Ag uses. Okay. Hmm. You guys have seen Rhino mowers. Oh yeah. Good thing because if you haven't, you need to check out my channel. <laughs> 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 When's your next meetup? Boone County Antique Tractor. You don't have the shirt. Did you not qualify? Uh, I wore my working clothes today. Oh. Boone County Antique Tractor and Machinery Club. When's the next meet? Uh, we meet the second Thursday of every month right here at the uh, Boone County Fairgrounds. And you've got a website too, right? We do have a website, the Boone County Antique Tractor and Machinery Club.com. Man, that's a lot to remember. Yeah, yeah. We'll put it right here in the bottom. Go check it out. Even if you're not from Boone County, leave them a message and say you saw them on Tractor Time with Tim. I'm sure they would uh, be excited to hear that. We also have a Facebook page that my mom actually runs. So. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it or not, I don't Facebook. You don't Facebook? No. How about you, Jim? No, I don't Facebook. No. There's the difference, guys. Antique tractors, no Facebook. There you go. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching, everybody, and thank you guys for helping. Yeah. And we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. <laughs>